In this video about the curriculum for Red Pill University, I want to talk about what are Australian values. Well, they certainly exist. The issue was first put on the public table by John Howard in an address to the National Press Club on Australia Day of 2006. He said, Within limits, all Australians have the right to express their culture and beliefs and to participate freely in our national life. And all Australians have a civic responsibility to support the basic structures and values of Australian society which guarantee us our freedom and equality. Leftists immediately claim that there's no such thing as Australian values. Yet the Citizenship Pledge says... From this time forward, I pledge my loyalty to Australia and its people, whose democratic beliefs I share, whose rights and liberties I respect, and whose laws I will obey and uphold. Leftists then suggested a lot of silly questions to be asked in the Australian citizenship, typically about Australian sports heroes. The issue was still bubbling away 12 years later when cartoonist John Kudelka suggested that Australian values included knowing Don Bradman's batting average. Of course, that was negative and childish. The fact is, Australia is part of Western civilization, and our core values come from that. When you think about it, our culture and values have roots in Athens, Rome and Jerusalem. These gave us rational thinking, civic duty and law, and moral and ethical values. The Reformation and the Enlightenment moved us away from unity of church and state and brought religious and political toleration. English law brought us the concept of the rule of law rather than rule by caprice or personal power. Australia is a pluralist parliamentary democracy, we have long been used to freedom of speech, of worship, of expression, and inquiry, and economic freedom. The rule of one secular rule, law for all, and respect for universal human rights. And I need to point out that universal human rights, so-called, are not in fact universal, but Western human rights. They're not found in Islamic or Chinese cultures, for example. They are rooted in Judeo-Christian notion that we're all made in the image and likeness of God and so deserving of infinite respect. These values are why we have been so successful as a civilization. They are the decisive underpinning of freedom, security, justice, peace, prosperity and the conservation of a livable environment. Unfortunately, our core values have long been under attack, firstly from cultural pessimism, secondly in more recent decades from political Islam, and now suddenly from an aggressively and infiltrating and bullying communist China, which has no regard for our values and sovereignty at all. Our loss of faith in the core underpinnings of our culture is seen every January with protests over so-called Invasion Day and lack of knowledge and appreciation of our history and the magnificent achievement of building this nation. For too many people, cult political correctness, nihilistic relativism and woke nonsense are destroying what were shared understandings, shared beliefs, shared observances and shared values. Why do I mention Islam as a problem? Australia has had significant numbers of Muslims only since the 1970s. But let's look at the wider historical record. For 1400 years, Islam has pursued a, pro a program of invading, colonising, subjugating and being a parasite on others. It has extinguished other cultures. Afghanistan used to be Buddhist. The Byzantine Empire was Christian, so was Egypt and all of North Africa. Iran, Persia, was Zoroastrian. It reduced all the Balkan conquered peoples and Hungary to dimitude, second-class citizenship. Its conquest of India 
imposed the greatest genocide in human history and eventually fragmented the country into three. Its mission objective is now to destroy our civilization and that of the West generally. How? Through many different forms of jihad, which is war to establish the religion. Wherever Islam has dominated, it has destroyed freedom, broken the impulse toward progress and brought despotism and criminal aggression. Useful idiots seek to appease it and facilitate its penetration. Jihad is not just about violence, not at all. It seeks domination by Islam by whatever means it takes. Let's look at some of its methods. Were you aware of all of these? Migration jihad, invasion of the West. Womb jihad, outbreeding Westerners. Stealth jihad, infiltrating political groups and government. Education jihad, corrupting and refocusing education curriculums and materials, establishing Islamic schools and university centres with Saudi money, distributing millions of Qurans. Financial jihad, Sharia finance, halal certification as a racket to raise funds for jihad. Inserting Islamic sympathisers into the media, for example the ABC, the SBS and The Project on Channel 10. Ecumenical jihad, interfaith talk fests and visits by imams to churches, never by Christian pastors to mosques. Making alliances with the left, which will eventually eat. The Greens love Islam and using Palestinians as a wedge issue in order to mobilise useful idiots. And then the civilizational jihad, suppressing Christmas and Easter and crosses as offensive while promoting Islamic festivals like Ramadan and Eid. Sharia judgments in divorces and wills, a woman worth only half, uh, half of a man, demanding multicultural grants for Islamic museums and community centres, removing pork from school meals, demanding Muslim prayer rooms at AFL venues, Muslim-only special facilities at swimming pools and publicly funded Muslim washrooms in universities, calls to ban selling of pig meat and alcohol, demanding that non-Muslim women cover up or be labelled sluts and raped, and calling for recognition of polygamy and Sharia. These are all attacks on Australian values. In 2015, the Islamic Cultural Centre of Brisbane posted a fundraising promo for a boarding madrasa, a school to teach Sharia law and educate a local generation of Islamic law practitioners, this is contrary to Australian law. Its theme was unashamed Islamic suprematism, the conquest of Constantinople and extinguishment of a Christian civilization. China today, under President Xi, presents a more serious threat to Australia's national security than we ever faced from the Soviet Union. It is a formidably huge economy with enormous military strength and no commitment to human rights. It has brought up large parts of our economy and productive resources. We have become dangerously dependent on China in our exports. 38% of our exports went to China in 2019. And Chinese production has replaced a very large part of our own ability to make things. China has subverted our universities and many in our financial elites and political class through corruption and bribery. All Chinese companies must serve the interests of the Chinese Communist Party. It expects the large Chinese diaspora to serve the interests of the Chinese Communist Party government and not Australia. China's current, current foreign policy is seeking to bully Australia into submission. China is a direct challenge to the values that we cherish as a democracy. In November 2020, 
Ch- the Chinese embassy gave Australia 14 demands based on its grievances at unwarranted actions by Australia. These included our banning Huawei from the, from the rollout of 5G, laws outlawing foreign interference, calls for an inquiry into the origins of the coronavirus, speaking out on the South China Sea, speaking out on human rights allegations in Xinjiang, thinly veiled allegations against China on cyber attacks, and new laws giving the federal government power to veto state or local government agreements with foreign governments, for example, Victoria's Belt and Road deal. No Australian government could satisfy demands that we abandon these without ceding our sovereignty and trashing our values. Here are two masterly and sobering books about the threat from China. If you haven't read them, look out for them. They're very good. So, what are the values that that define what it is to be Australian? Here is a checklist of 21. A pluralist democratic system with, with free, secret and regular elections. Acceptance of the majority vote and self-restraint by victors in the use of democratic power. Peaceful, lawful and non-violent dem- settlement of disagreements. Support for law and order. Freedom of political opinion and speech. Freedom to read, write and publish material except to the extent that this may untruthfully defame or threaten the safety of others. Freedom of political and other association in civil society. Freedom to worship and freedom to proselytise subject to respect for the similar rights of others. Independence of the state from religious institutions and tests. The English language as the basis for national dialogue, political activity, broader community interaction and law. Equal op- equal respect and equal treatment of men and women before the law and in society generally. Respect for human rights and dignity and non-discrimination against people on grounds of sex, sexuality, religion or ethnic origin to the extent that these are incompatible with the principle of individual merit. The rule of law, with an independent judiciary, an application of the single system of national law equally applicable to all people. Acceptance of the multi-ethnic roots of the population and tolerance of cultural differences subject to observance of Australian law, but refusal of the right of any religious or ethnic minority to reject or subvert the majority culture. And finally, belief in education, self-improvement and the, and the pursuit of excellence. Belief in the work ethic. Belief in equality of opportunity. Care for the environment. Compassion for the disadvantaged and victims of misfortune. Belief in and support for community. And finally, quiet pride in national identity and national achievements. They're pretty good values, don't you think?